Corset 2020 brings with it eight significant changes to Magic the Gathering. So buckle up, Becky, we're going for a drive. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. Welcome to my video outlining eight major changes for Magic the Gathering, starting with Core 2020. Now, these were pulled from actually a list of 15 important changes that were sent out to WPN retailers. So the official stores that sell Magic the Gathering was sent a huge list of things that they needed to know. Now, I trimmed off the stuff that's not specific for our, our level of interest, right? We're not stores, so it doesn't really matter to us when they get to schedule things in the system. That, that doesn't change much for us. But there are a number of changes that definitely do impact us as players and overall enjoyifiers of this game. So we're going to start out with probably the biggest one that's going to make the most people excited. I don't know if this is going to carry over into future sets or if this is a gimmick for Core 2020, but they're doing a shift with the foil cards in the booster packs. For those of you who don't know, on the back of the pack, they will have the odds printed in the tiny, tiny little words here telling you what the odds are for getting a foil in a pack. Now, when you look at War of the Spark, it's one out of every 67 cards, or roughly four and a half booster packs. If you look at Core 2020, how that works is it's one out of every 45 cards, which means it's one out of every three packs. So instead of one out of every four and a half packs giving you a foil, roughly now it's one out of every three packs that'll give you a foil roughly and that honestly is a massive increase they don't normally do this sort of thing normally the the foils are held back a little bit more we don't get as many oh no oh no the poster's revolted we gotta do this quick before the whole place collapses all right so, <laughs> so the foil change is a major one as is the everything i'm going to cover here is a major one to me a major change to magic except for the bonus, the one bonus issue that we're going to deal with, which is technically number nine, but it didn't really feel like an important one because it's something they've done before. So, foils is number one. We get an increased amount of foils. Thumbs up for that. After that, we've got changes to bundles or fat packs, depending on the terminology you are used to. I can hear you. You stay up there. Come on now. I'm running a professional operation here. None of this nonsense. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry. All right. All right. Hurry. Hurry. Okay. So the bundles have 20. Oh God, no. And, uh, they have 20. <laughs> they have 20 foil lands in them. All right. So instead of an 80 pack of lands. Ah! No. No. Okay. I'm just going to wear it. Okay. So bundles now have 20 foil lands on them. Nope, in them. I'm thinking about this was being on the wall. I'm so sad now. So bundles have 20 foil lands in them, and I think it's now just 20 regular lands as well. The they are they are including an alternate art foil promo and an oversized spin down die. So those are changes. There is a, there is a negative change too, and that is the player's guide is going away. Interestingly enough, when they sent the notification out to retailers saying, hey, these are the changes you should know about. They went, we've improved the bundle contents, but it doesn't actually mention that they're not putting the player's guide in there. So that to me seems like a mistake. I think that they should like, be, hey, stores, just so you know, when you go to sell this, understand too that the book is missing. So that's a little, eh, what are you doing? But that is a, a big change. Bundles will now have 20 foil lands, an alternate art foil promo, oversized spin down die, no player's guide, same amount of booster packs though so the meat the meat of it stays the same but we do lose the cool players guide and i for one will miss them i like those little visual encyclopedias with the extra information added on oh crinkle crinkle my new dress is very sweet moving on to point number three i believe it's three i don't know i'm so distracted by what happened number three friday pre-releases so the pre-release you don't have to do a midnight pre-release anymore for you 
for you insanos who like to stay up until midnight and like, I gotta get the cards now! Wizard of the Coast record releases cards so quickly that we'll probably be in the spoiler free season for the next step by Saturday morning. So we gotta do this Friday night, baby, so I can go online and refresh on Mythic Spoiler. Anything new? Anything new? Oh God, give me another hit! That's the level we live at. So Friday pre-releases, three o'clock in the afternoon now. Stores are able to do it three o'clock your time. So wherever you are, wherever your store is, three o'clock at the afternoon, specifically in that time zone. So say goodbye to, uh, I guess we're just gonna creep towards having Thursday morning pre-releases bit by bit as they push it back. But anyways, right now you can do them on Friday afternoon. I always liked that, never been a fan of the midnight pre-releases. You're not gonna catch me out there doing that nonsense that late. So there's a big change. The next big change is that Planeswalker decks will be, be available for sale during the open house weekend. That is not the norm, and in all honesty, this is a smart move because open house is when you get your beginners out, Core set is specifically geared towards being a little more simplistic, easier for beginners to dip their sweet little pinky toes in the water so you can get them to come and swim to Papa Good Times. So we've got we've got that scenario where the Planeswalker decks will be available to the people they should be available to. And as a side note, in case you didn't know, there's actually going to be five Planeswalker decks. Although that doesn't really feel like it counts as a change to me because the last Core 2019 also had five Planeswalker decks, although it remains to be seen whether they will each include two booster packs or one booster pack. So that information hasn't been made readily available. Another big point, this would be number five on the list in case you're keeping track, is the London Mulligan. The London Mulligan comes into effect. If you don't know what the London Mulligan is, you're gonna wanna learn what it is. In most cases, I'm guessing, if you're watching this, you probably watch me normally, and I've talked about it in previous videos, so you're probably up to speed with what the London Mulligan is, but it will officially come into effect when Core 2020 drops. So be prepared for the change, and don't think your opponents are cheating when they start to do it London style. After that, we've got point six on the list, and that is promo packs. These are actually a huge change when it comes to Magic the Gathering and how promos are distributed. They won't affect the buy a box promos, but it will affect a wide number of things. Actually, the best thing to do, honestly, if you want information about it, is to just go back and watch the video that I released yesterday, where I go in depth about the exact contents of what you can get in these promo packs, what they mean, what they're replacing, and also specifically tell you what you will get in core 2020 versions of them. So I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video if you want to know more about point six on the list, the delicious, beautiful promo packs. And I advise you to, because they were so interesting and important, that they actually got their own separate video. Next up, number seven, welcome decks. We are bringing in the newest generation of welcome decks. That means a new brew, probably some new cards that will specifically be usable in standard, but in most cases won't be strong enough. Out of the previous iteration of welcome decks, the only thing that felt strong enough really to screw around with outside of... Um, outside of the decks themselves was Aggressive Mammoth. I like that one, six mana for an 8-8 Trampler that gives all you guys trample, thumbs up from me. So we may get some more goodness in there. All those cards and all the cards from the Welcome Deck, which are the decks that they use at the open house, those are all standard legal, everything in them. So there may be something in there that you want. Either way, I really like the Welcome Decks. I think they're a fantastic tool to bring people into the game so they get the fat thumbs up for me and I'm curious to see what's gonna be contained within them. And the final, the final change is buy a box allocations. These will be determined by tickets and engaged players. For those of you who don't know, tickets basically are just the total number of people and number of events that you fired off. So if you ran an event with 10 people in it, you get 10 tickets and they use that total along with number of engaged players. And engaged players are just people who have played in your shop for six, six events, either standard, sealed, or draft within the last 12 months. So basically once every two months. So they're gonna measure the number of engaged players you have and they're gonna number, they're also going to take a look at how many tickets you have 
and that will determine your buy a box allocation and that's how many of those buy a box promos that a store is given so that will affect you if you live in a major area where you found that oh they never have enough promos they run out really quickly even the pre the pre-order list of people have already gotten so full that there's just not enough buy boxes to go around even for pre-orders so if you live in one of those areas boom you will see the number of buy a boxes increase and we'll see if wizards gets the balance right in terms of tickets engaged players and how much they send out to the store in that regard so that's the that's the top eight quick refresher we've got the change to foils we've got the change to bundles we've got new friday pre-releases at three o'clock we've got planeswalker decks available at the open house the london mulligan dropping promo packs which i will link again at the end of this video welcome deck changes and the buy box allocation shifts as well now i said there was another ninth point that doesn't count as an important change because it's not actually an important change it's just a nice to know and that is during this season the core 2020 season wizards will once again be giving out codes that you can use to redeem for three I, unless they change the amount three booster packs in arena i like that it's just something that they will advertise in arena a few days before it happens then you head down to the shop you play in an fnm and you get an extra code for your arena pack for your arena packs i like that that's that's pretty sweet so I, I know there's a number of things going on i tried to keep the video nice and short and not go over long about everything probably would have been a little bit faster if it wasn't for for mr minecraft here that's all i have to say on the changes so it's time to roll the golden scroll the people of my back on Patreon and through channel memberships or through channel memberships. So thanks for supporting the channel, my friends. Genuinely appreciate it. Glad to have you on board. To everyone, I say thanks for being here. And for now, I'm history, baby. How dare you embarrass me in front of the common people? Hey, don't you turn away from me.